Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Modern Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, what's easier than falling off a log? Here's what's easier. It's fixing yourself up with the swellest tasting breakfast ever. Simply take a big red and blue package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Pour out a crisp, fresh bowlful of delicious rice or wheat shot from guns. See how big, how keen looking these premium king size grains are. That's because they're shot from guns. Exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Now pour on some milk and top with fresh canned or stewed fruit. And say, do you know what you've got in practically no time at all? You've got a breakfast treat that can't be beat. That's Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. The sergeant stopped the team at the top of the rise. Oh, King. Oh, there, oh. King, who was working as a loose lead, trotted back to his master's side. Below them, on the edge of the forest, was the Lost River Trading Post. I don't like the looks of the place either, boy. Not a sign of life, not even a dog in sight. But the smoke coming from the factor's cabin, Hank Lloyd or his daughter must be there. We're going on. Up front, boy. I'm King. Run, the sergeant drove down the long slope and stepped on the brake in front of the factor's cabin. Oh, there, King. Easy, boy. But before he had a chance to step off the running board, one of the cabin windows was raised. A girl of 18 leveled a rifle at the sergeant. Up with your hands. If you insist. Are you Hank Lloyd's daughter? It doesn't matter who I am. Just turn your team around and get out of your bed. Aren't you interested in who I am? No. You have no business here. That's where you're wrong. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Sergeant Preston? What do you want? I want to talk with your father. What about? Business. Oh. The manager of the Yukon Trading Company in Dawson asked me to stop here. Well, you can't talk with him about anything. He isn't well. He's here, though? Yes. He's inside in bed. He's had a heart attack, and he can't be disturbed. In that case, I won't insist. May I lower my hands? I, I guess so. Thank you. I imagine that you can answer all my questions, Miss Lloyd. What if I refuse to? Would you? If they were about Bill Corey? Bill? Did he send you here? I think you'd better let me come in, Miss Lloyd. You... You promise not to disturb my father? Yes. All right, then. I'll unbar the door. One thing. <laughs> Please be quiet. Take a seat by the stove. Thank you. Now, what's on your mind? Your father used to have some Indians around here. They've gone. You're running the post alone? Yes. Please get to the point. Well, this is a branch of the Yukon Trading Company. Of course. You sent your sleds down to the main warehouse in Dawson twice this winter for supplies. That's right. In each case, a man named Metka Joe came with them, an Indian. And in each case, he had a letter from your father. There's nothing unusual about that. Joe's been picking up supplies for years. I know. But what your Dawson office couldn't understand was the reason for your sending empty sleds down there. Why didn't you send the pouch you'd bought? The weather's been bad. We were afraid they might be damaged. I see. Well, Joe didn't even have that much of an explanation. And there were a lot of questions about the post he either couldn't or wouldn't answer. That's why the assistant manager, why, Bill Corey, decided to come back here with him. Bill... Started out for Lost River with Joe. Did Joe arrive here without him? Joe never came back at all. Oh, Bill. Please. What? Why did he have Miss to... Lloyd, 
I appreciate your feelings. I've been told that you and Bill plan to be married in the spring, and this must be a great shock. But try to control yourself. Yes, sir. I will. You understand that if Joe and Bill have been lost on the trail, I'll do my best to find them. But there's one thing you must tell me first. What? Why haven't you reported this? I didn't know about Bill. But the Indian and your supplies. We thought he'd stolen them. Well, even so, why didn't you report that? We sent out searching parties. We're still sending them out. That's where Jack and the others are right now, looking for Joe. Jack and the others? I didn't tell you the truth, Sergeant. I'm not running the post. Who is? Jack Trainer. He's a friend of my father's, and he took over when Dad became ill. He got rid of the Indians, and he hired some white men to help him, and... I don't know anything about the post, Sergeant. I'm too worried about my father. And now, Bill. Well, I, I won't bother you anymore, Miss Lloyd, but I'm going to have to stay here until Turner gets back. Please don't. I must. Go and look for Bill. First thing in the morning. Is there a cabin around here where I may sleep? The one next to the storehouse. Does Trainer live there? Oh, no, he lives in the bunkhouse with the men. Bunkhouse will do for me. There isn't room. Why, it's large enough for a dozen men. And there are a dozen here. Some trappers as well as the men who work here. I see. All right, Miss Lloyd. I'll sleep in the cabin next to the storehouse. If I have any more questions, I'll go to Trainer with them. Please do. Let's go, King. <laughs> the sergeant fed his team and prepared to spend the night in the cabin next to the storehouse. It was just at dusk that six sleds drove into the camp. There were two men to a sled, and the sergeant realized that the man who drove the first must be Jack Trainer. He was big, swarthy, heavily bearded. He left the other man to take care of the dogs and went straight to the factor's cabin. The sergeant could see him talking with the factor's daughter at the door. It looks like a tough customer, King, and so do the others. The girls said they were trappers, but they looked more like outlaws. Oh, Trainer's coming over here. A moment later, there's a knock at the door of the cabin. Come in. I've been That's right. I'm Jack Trainer, acting manager of the post. The door said you wanted to have a talk with me. Yes. About Metka Joe and Bill Corey. Yeah, sad news that Corey was with Joe. I'm afraid that thieving Indians murdered him. Let's hope not. Well, if it had to, he would get away with supplies, wouldn't he? I suppose so. Trainer. You were in charge here when Joe was sent down to Dawson? That's right. Miss Lloyd said you'd fired all the other Indians. That was just recently. After Joe proved they couldn't be trusted. I see. And you brought your friends in to help you run the post. And to help find Joe. Why didn't you send someone to our headquarters in Dawson and report what happened? Because I'm sure that Joe's somewhere around here, hiding out. What's more, I'm sure those Indians up the river know where he is. We just come back from the village. And you didn't find anything? No, sir. We even threatened to shoot the chief if he wouldn't talk. He didn't. And, of course, we didn't go through with the shooting. That would have only made matters worse. You going after Joe? Of course. And you want a description of him. Look, he's big for an Indian, nearly six feet tall. There's a scar on his forehead over the right eye. He was wearing a black and white parka when he left here. No telling what he's wearing now, maybe Corey's parka. Seems strange that the man who's been honest and trustworthy for so long should suddenly turn into a killer. That's the Indian of it. We should never trust him. Don't forget that the supplies he stole would make Joe a rich man. Yes. Well, I'll be starting out in the morning, trainer. You've given me all the information I need. We're willing to help, you know, all of us. Thanks. I may call on you after I've picked up the trail. Good night, trainer. Uh, good night. Trainer left the sergeant's cabin, his jaw set, his eyes narrowed and menacing. His men were waiting for him in the bunkhouse. What are we going to do now, Jack? Yeah, Listen, well, uh, Preston's looking for Metro Joe. Yeah, but if he ever finds Joe, if he finds Joe before we do, Jack, don't you see? He it? hasn't got a chance. I don't know. There's nobody can follow a trail like those Maoris. That dog of his Shut can't. up! We've all been talking it over. We don't want any part of the Northwest Mounted Police. That's right, that's right. right. I told you to shut up, all of you, and listen. Preston will be leaving here in the morning. I've given him Joe's description. There's nothing to keep him here. He'll start early. But he won't get far. Why not? Because he'll be followed. But murder, Jack, a Mountie. Well, what other way is there? He's got to disappear someplace where he'll never be found. We're not going to stay here much longer. When I'm sure that he's out of the way, we load up our sleds and go. Now, come on, break out one of those bottles and let's have a drink. The sergeant turned in. King lay down by the door of the cabin. And although he closed his eyes, his brain remained alert. This was a strange camp. And the great dog sensed there was danger in the air. 
He didn't like the big man who had talked with his master. He didn't like the raucous voices that came from the bunkhouse. And even after the post became silent, King refused to sleep. Hours passed. King raised his head and whimpered. There was a man outside, close to the cabin. Perhaps his master should be warned. He rose to his feet and trotted to the side of the bunk where the sergeant lay asleep. He lifted a paw and touched the Mountie's shoulder. The sergeant stirred. What's the matter, King? King went to the door and scratched on it. Want to go out? Come on. All right, just wait till I get under my boots. I'll take a look. The sergeant walked to the window. There seemed to be no one outside. He looked down at King. You sure, fellow? I can't see anyone. Wait. There was a man standing in the shadow of the storehouse next to the cabin. He crept silently along the side of the building until he reached the door. Then he reached into his pocket. And a second later, he was unlocking the door. We'll see who it is, boy. Come on. The sergeant picked up his parka and slipped into it on his way to the door. King stayed close to his side. They approached the open door of the storehouse carefully. The sergeant's gun was ready. All right, come out of there with your hands up. Come out or I'll start shooting. Me come. Hurry up. Me. Me not tell you where him at. What's that? You. You not work for trainer. Me see you before in Dawson. You, Sergeant Preston. Who are you? Me. Me met Kajo. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice offer these three important things you're after in a ready-to-serve breakfast cereal. One, flavor. Swell, nut-like flavor. Two, crispness. Tender, melt-in-your-mouth crispness. Three, nourishment. Restore natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are the famous cereals shot from guns. Yes, huge guns are loaded with only the premium wheat or rice grains. Then these choice kingpin kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. They are puffed to perfection, crisp and tender as nuts in November. Shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Don't let anything hold you back. Get both delicious kinds, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Eat the wheat one time, rice the next. It's never sold in bags or bulk, but comes only in the big Quaker red and blue package. Tomorrow, sure, buy wheat or rice shot from guns for breakfast, lunch, or supper. Now to continue our story. After the Indian, who had been caught in the storehouse, admitted he was Metka Joe... The sergeant watched him to the cabin next door. Inside. Sit down. I'll light the lamp. Train to find me. Him kill me. He's accused you of robbery. That not true. What were you doing in the storehouse? Me get food for Mr. Bill. For Bill Coring? Ah. Where is he? Me take you to him. Now, wait a minute. Let's get things straight. You left here and went to Dawson to pick up supplies. Yeah. Bill Corey started back with you. That true. What happened? Why didn't you ever get back here? Me not good at talk. Me take you, Mr. Bill. You're sure this isn't a trick? No, no trick. Me not have gun. All right. I got my team on it. No. Dogs make much noise. It better trainer not know you go. How far is it? You be there two hours. Just remember you'll be covered every minute. Huh? One king. Quiet boy. <laughs> The sergeant, King, and Metka Doe headed through the camp and into the forest. There was no trail. The huge firs grew close together, and the tangled underbrush slowed up their progress. But the Indian never hesitated. And two hours later, he pointed to a clearing just ahead, where the moon shone down on a small cabin. There, cabin we go. Good. Soon you see Mr. Bill. Him tell you about trainer. Anything wrong with Bill? Uh, him hurt bad. Joe think him die. Now him walk little. Who hurt him? Him tell you. Mr. Bill, Joe bring Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston, welcome. 
welcome. How are you, Bill? Okay. Now, Joe hasn't told me much of anything. I want to know what happened to you. And I want to know about Dora and Hank. Are they all right? Hank isn't well, but there's nothing wrong with Dora. Now, come on, let's have it. I'm tired of all this mystery. Well, it's all trainer. Joe didn't say anything about Hank being sick or a trainer of having charge of the post until he and I were outside of Dawson. Why not, Joe? Uh, Miss Dora say not talk in Dawson. That's all you'll get out of him. But naturally, when I heard about Hank, I was really worried, and we pushed on fast. We made good time. Let's see, it was only our fourth camp, and we were 20 miles from Lost River. That night, Trainer and a couple of his men met us. When he heard I was from the main office, it didn't seem to bother him. Not at first. But after we'd eaten, he and I were talking in his tent. Good thing we came out to meet Joe, Corey. It'll save you time. How do you mean? You don't have to go any farther. I can tell you everything you want to know about the post right here. Well, why does Lost River need so many supplies this winter? Well, business is good. We need him to pay the Indians for their furs. Then why haven't you sent any pelts in? Take a chance on the trails in this weather? Oh, nothing doing. You get a good shipment in spring, though. More furs than Lost River ever sent before. Well, that's fine. Yes, sir. Now, any more questions? No. And I'll have a couple of the boys travel back to Dawson with him. Oh, that isn't necessary. Well, there's no reason why you should break trail all by yourself. Get this straight, trainer. I won't be ready to make my report to the company until I've talked with Hank Lloyd. I'm running the post. Hank's still the factor as far as we're concerned. You're not wanted at Lost River, Corey. Are you going to try and stop me from getting there? I'm going to do more than try. <laughs> no! That's all there was to it, Sergeant. He took out a gun and shot me. What happened afterward, Joe? Uh, him tell me get rid of Mr. Bill. Hide him in forest. Me put him on empty sled, drive away. But Mr. Bill not dead. Me stop, fix wound, bring here. It's been nearly a month. What about the supplies? The trainer, take him. Me see him in storehouse tonight. I wonder how much Dora knows about this. Nothing, probably. You don't suppose trainer would tell her? Not about you. I still can't figure out what's going on at that post. The trainer's up to something, that's sure, and I have an idea Dora knows what it is. You're not accusing her of being dishonest. No. Still, she must have known that the supplies arrived from Dawson, even if Joe didn't come with them. And she accused Joe of being a thief. No. Miss Nora not think that. She may not think it, but she said it. Before I arrest Trainer, I'm going to have another talk with her. Dora couldn't do anything wrong. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's right or wrong. Sometimes, without all the facts, it's impossible. Can I go back to the post with you, Sergeant? No, you're not up to it, Bill. Yeah. Enough food in this knapsack to last you and Joe for a couple of days. I'll be back before then. Yeah, there are plenty of men at post. You try arrest trainer, them kill you. Don't worry, Joe. We'll find some way to do it. Won't we, King? <laughs> right. And it will help if we get back to the post before morning. So long, Bill. Take care of yourself. You're the one who better do that, Sergeant. Trainer's the killer. The Sergeant and King followed their back trail to the post. And they finally emerged from the forest at exactly the same spot where they had entered it. The post seemed to be sleeping still. But there was a light in the factor's cabin. And the sergeant had started toward it when King suddenly stopped and growled a warning. The door of the cabin opened and the girl stood in the doorway. She was carrying a sled harness and a shotgun. She looked toward the bunkhouse and then started to run toward the cabin where the sergeant had slept that night. The girl stopped for a moment in front of the cabin, then ran around and back where the sergeant had left his sled and team. She had roused the dogs and was trying to line them up when the sergeant and King turned the corner of the cabin. Can I help you, Miss Lloyd? Sergeant, you've come back. Yes. Where have you been? I found Metka Joe. And Bill? Yes, you'll be glad to know he's alive. He won't be for long unless you hurry. Harness your team and I'll tell you the whole story. The truth. Dad and I have decided it's the only way. I have my own harness here on the sled. Go on. Can't you keep the dogs quiet? Keep them quiet, King. Now go on. What is the truth you want to tell me? Dad's ill, Sergeant. Oh, That's yes. true. But that isn't the real reason he turned the post over to Trainer. Trainer came here about three months ago and he recognized Dad. You see, our name isn't Lloyd, Sergeant. It's Lorimer. Oh. Ten years ago, Dad was mixed up in a shooting scrape down in Vancouver. He ran away and came up here. Well, Trainer threatened to turn him over to the police if he didn't follow his orders. 
I'm the one who made Dad agree to it. I didn't want him to go to jail. What's Trainer planning to do? Keep buying furs all winter with the company goods. In the spring, he plans to smuggle them across the border and sell them. He'll make a fortune. You believe me, don't you? Why not? Then you must believe this, too. Less than an hour ago, there was a knock at the door of our cabin. When I opened it, there was an Indian standing there. A worthless renegade they call Mike Calico. How? Where me find him, trainer? What do you want with him? Him pay Indian two guns, two blankets. Tell him where Metka Joe hide. Do you know where Metka Joe is? Mm. Is there a white man with him? That's right. Listen, I'll give you the two guns and the two blankets if you don't tell trainer. What do you mean? There's a mounted policeman named Preston who's staying over in the cabin next to the storehouse. I want you to come with me and tell him instead. Mm. Mike, do that. Oh, no, you won't, Mike. Jack. Trying to put something over, huh, Dora? No. No, after all, the sergeant's here. That's I... where you're wrong. His cabin's empty. Did you say there was a white man with Joe, Mike? Mm. Big man, yellow hair? That's right. Yeah, your sweetheart's tough, Dora. But I figured he was still alive when Joe didn't come back here. Admit, you tried to kill him. You met him out on the trail. I you... admit everything. This time, I'll make sure the job is finished. You can't. The sergeant, you'll be arrested for murder. We'll take care of the sergeant, too, if and when he shows up again. Which way do we go, Mike? You take dog team? Yeah. Best way, cross Lost River one mile west. Follow old trail through forest to spring. Then Mike show you. Good. We'll harness up. Keep your mouth shut, Dora. Or you know what'll happen to your father. How long ago they leave? About half an hour. Those trainer and Mike? No, Trigger went with them. I didn't know what to do. But when the other men in the bunkhouse went back to sleep, I decided to try and follow. If I couldn't warn Bill in time, I thought I might be able to help him. Or... Oh, I don't know. But I had to do something, and I was going to take your team. You will go after them, won't you, Sergeant? And I know a shorter route. Is he going to quiet, remember? Probably rougher going than the way Turner's taking. We've already broken the trail. King will get me there in time. I'm going to harness him, too. He knows what this means. Speed, King. We must reach the cabin before Trainer does. There you are. The sergeant stepped on the running board. A quiet command. On King! And silently, swiftly, King led the team through the post and on into the forest. To the west and far side of Lost River, Trainer, Mike, and Trigger followed the hard-packed trail as far as the spring. Oh, oh, oh there! Oh! It's not far now. Better you leave team here. Okay. There's snowshoes on the sled, Trigger. Right. Some for you, too, Mike. Mm, that's good. How long will it take us from here? We get there before day comes. Yeah, let's make sure of it. Hurry. Mike knew the forest well, and the three men made good time. The moon was still shining when the clearing was reached. The cabin was dark. Sure this is the place, Mike? Mm. We'll catch them both asleep. Yeah. No mistakes now. Silently, they crossed the clearing. The two white men with their guns ready in front, the Indian behind. A few yards from the cabin, they stopped to take off their snowshoes. Then they walked on, straight to the door. On your toes now. There's nobody here. Those cots are empty. They've gone, Mike. No. We see him today. Suddenly, from the shadows at the far end of the cabin, they heard a voice. Trainer, hey, you're under arrest in the name of the queen. Hey, come out of here. Both Trainer and Trigger fired in the direction of the voice. But the sergeant had leaped aside as soon as he had spoken. Now he answered their fire from the other corner of the cabin. Trigger was hit and dropped to the floor. Trainer and Mike started to run for the cover of the forest. Oh, Bill, stop them. Up to you, King. Stop them. Get them. At his master's command, the great dog leaped forward. The Indian was closest to him, but King's quick brain told him that he was not dangerous. It was the other man who carried the gun. It was he who had fired against his master. It was he who must be stopped. King raced past the Indian, but now Trainer had reached the trees and he turned to fire. In that moment, King launched himself against him. Man and dog went down. But the bullet creased King's chest, but the searing pain meant nothing to him. And he held this man helpless until he heard his master's command. I'm getting the covered. Up on your feet, sir. You can't arrest me. Oh, no. maybe these handcuffs will convince you that you're not on again. It was just at sunrise that the sergeant walked to the bunkhouse at the post where trainer's men were sleeping. He was all alone. 
But his guns were ready. And his voice rang with the authority. All of those bunks! Don't listen to me! Rainer's wearing handcuffs. Figure's badly wounded. They're both under arrest, and the charge is attempted murder. Hey, Keep quiet! You're all under arrest. But the charge against the rest of you isn't serious, unless you resist. I'd advise against that. We haven't done anything. What are you arresting us for? You've been helping Trainer in his scheme to rob the Yukon Trading Company. Get into your clothes. You're heading the trail for Dawson. In half an hour, seven sleds with their dog teams harnessed were lined up in front of the factor's cabin. Trainer, wearing handcuffs, was lying on one of them. His men paid no attention to him, but jumped at every command from the sergeant. King, with a bandage around his chest, was lying on the sergeant's sled, watching his master, Dora, and Bill Corey. You think you can handle this crowd, sergeant? Oh, I don't think they'll make any trouble, Bill. I have Joe with me to help guard them. What about my father, sergeant? I'm releasing him into your custody. But, uh, we have a complete file on all the men who are wanted for murder, and he isn't. Sergeant, he, he may be wanted for some other charge. Well, that'll have to be checked. I've, uh... Talked with your father. His experience with trainers taught him a lesson. He wants to clear his name. But it wasn't his fault. He shot in self-defense. Isn't it better to prove that? To face the charge and live in constant fear of being found out? Yes. Yes, Sergeant. And I've learned my lesson, too. But don't worry too much, Dora. I don't believe your father will go to jail. In fact, King, I believe the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Say, you fellas and girls, get set for a big surprise. Yes, siree, you're going to hear some terrific news right here on this program next Monday. We're going to tell you about an offer that's out of this world. Now get this. You don't have to send in a single thing to take advantage of this amazing offer. Now that's all I can tell you about it now, except to say, don't miss out. Be listening to Challenge of the Yukon next Monday. That's this coming Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gum. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Strike at Pelican Creek. Wayne Lester served a term in prison for a crime he didn't commit. When he was released, he came to the Yukon Territory with his sister to build a new life. There he came face to face with his bitterest enemy, the man who had framed him for a crime. In trying to help Wayne Lester, I found myself facing two criminals. Men who knew their freedom depended on killing me. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant... Of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.